All right, that's better. Okay, so wisdom and youth. Can unlimited souls be created? And that is really like, of course, the age old spiritual question of which you have wars being fought over the afterlife and religion and belief systems and politics. And so this is my take on it because last night I was asking myself and asking all of you when I was just going over my mind going like, why is it that it's so hard for some people to understand my information and other people, it's just like they get it like that. And you could say, well, they've been studying it, you know, for a long time. So they've already been primed. And yeah, we can chalk it up to that. Some people have not been studying the holistic industry or the allopathic industry that hard. And they totally get it and they adopt it, right? I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there that, that's like that, that hasn't had major exposure to fermentation or to um, anything holistic or haven't, or have been um, experimenting with holistic stuff. So, you know, not every, not everybody has and some people have. And, and, and so it's like some people get this information without going through those avenues and it makes you wonder why how is it that some people get my information some people don't and i figured out that you know that maybe you know i'm not saying reincarnate i mean maybe reincarnation exists to some extent but it would say that there's only a certain amount of life that can be created and then the souls get recycled and maybe you're lucky enough to to, to be a soul that's floating around that can find somebody that's um, about to procreate and inhabit that 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 physical body. And that doesn't make sense either because because when you grow plants, a, a plant if 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 it has a perfect environment and there is no um, other force that's going to stop it to balance it or to stop it from growing, it'll keep growing, okay? Um, plant like like grass. If if the conditions were perfect and there was no major storms, no major weather, no you know animals like um, eating it or walking on it to stunt its growth, the the grass or plants would just keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing until something stops it. Okay, no different than when you throw a ball into the universe, right, or into space. And the ball just keeps going until it hits against another object and then it changes its trajectory. Okay? Right now we have like what we, what we call gravity, right? The, the flat earthers don't believe in gravity. But like, you know, you, you drop a ball. Okay, you drop something and it keeps going, 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 going until it hits, a, until it hits something and it stops it. Okay? So until something stops something from going... It'll keep going forever. And so I think that's also with life. I mean, you can, I, I, I am thinking that um, some of us have learned from, um, from things in the past. Like I talked about, you know, I joke around with some of my friends and like, oh yeah, you know, we're Vietnamese and Asians have been around forever. And they have, I mean, Asians have been around forever, Africa, India, um, and then there are some cultures that are very new that that have evolved maybe from some other cultures. And with that evolution, it's because it's procreation and reproduction. And when you procreate and you reproduce, it, it, it's like a new being. But like, are you a new new soul or have you been able to be recycled from, you know, from years past? And so that's the one of the weirdest things because you think about like with grass, you know, when, when grass keeps growing and then um, and then maybe there's a storm that comes by and it, uh, it it kills the grass for a minute and then or winter comes by and stops the grass from growing and then spring comes out and then the grass is growing again. So is there new grass? Is it a recycled soul grass that, you know, that came from, you know, that that's able to come back? You know, I mean, I mean, that's kind of sounds kind of weird because it's grass conscious. Well, you know, people can argue about plants and animals or plants being conscious. But I, I really believe that we that, that you can 
create unlimited souls because why would life of a human be that different than a plant or when you drop an object and it keeps going, going, going until it gets stopped? So the people that understand my information, okay, you know, I, well, how I learned this stuff is I first I learned from the people that made mistakes. Um, how I got it got by in this world is I looked at people who made mistakes around me and I didn't do what they did. I mean, how any culture is able to survive past all of these crazy wars and everything is that they learn from the past. They learn from people who've made mistakes before them. Why we're able to be here today is because we learn from what happened a long time ago and we do something different. And so I think that that we there isn't a set amount of souls in this world. I think that, you know, with wisdom and youth, well, what's wisdom and what's youth? Wisdom is when you have so much information and from of the ages that maybe you don't even know where you got it from. Maybe you just have like an old soul. You see a baby that is just very calm and you see like the, their eyes are so expressive and has like, it's like it's taking in the world, but it's not reacting. It's not scared, but that you see that they're an old soul. Okay. You know, that baby's probably been around that. The baby soul has probably been on this earth before and it's now starting over again. Okay. And so, and then, you know, and then, and, and so they're, they're, they have wisdom and yeah, they're going to have to relearn a lot of the things of this current world, but their ability to grasp concepts and their ability, their talents comes from the fact that they have predisposition. Now you can say, well, with the parents, well, yeah, the parents have been, um, they came from another genetic line. So you think about genetic lines, how long they are. And some people can trace their genetic lines from, you know, all the way to wherever, and other people don't even know their genetic lines, and maybe their genetic lines are very, very short, just like telomeres. Telomeres are either long, which means that's a long life, or your telomeres are very short. It means that that you don't have a long to live. Well, genetic lines, when it comes to your family line, could be very, very long, and you have a very, very long genetic line. You have wisdom through the ages, so as long as that is, is you're able to to tap into your genetic line and offer wisdom to the current world. But then you think about then what about all the different mutations and the predispositions and and yeah that that but then mutations aren't exactly a bad thing. Mutations can be a good thing. Mutations like you know evolution. Okay? I mean, and so that all comes into play too, you know? But how do but then you can have wisdom and not evolve. But how do you have wisdom and not evolve? Well, because you can have wisdom for a very short amount of time and but yet you're still doing the same thing that your parents did, even though you may have wisdom for a short amount of time where you can offer something like, you know, Einstein, uh, Tesla, um, uh, who else? You know, Isaac Newton. So you can have all these people with wisdom, but they are like a flash in the pan and they haven't evolved and their genetic line hasn't evolved, but they've offered more things to the world that people can use but is their genetic line really offering anything of value when it comes to real evolution of that same human same human being? So can evolution happen without reproducing and dying? Absolutely. Right now, I think evolution, the, the definition of evolution right now in our current society is that people die and reproduce and maybe the next generation is better, though I haven't really seen that because right now we're dealing with the millennials who are going off and partying and bringing home the coronavirus to home to to potentially harm their 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 family. Okay, so I don't really think that right now the current uh, state that we're in, people are really evolving. I think that the technology is evolving, but biologically people are actually devolving. <laughs> And so what I'm trying to introduce and toss around is that, yeah, unlimited souls can be created, but will you have the atmosphere and the environment to sustain it? And there are balancing forces that will stop the uh, continuous um, reproduction of, of, of souls and so that's what you're seeing right now is the COVID-19 is saying, okay, there's too many souls on this planet. 
You haven't perfected your existence on this earth. And so we're going to have this balancing force that says, okay, if you can survive the new environment, then you have wisdom. Okay, that's what this comes down to, is those that actually can evolve without dying. That is the true wisdom of the ages, because eventually we're going to have to learn from our predecessors and why we keep cycling and looping in life, death and reproduction or death and reproduction is because people are not evolving. The technology may be evolving. The uh, the um, Einstein and all of his concepts and Tesla's concepts have have evolved our capacity to be able to sustain the death and reproduction loop without completely decimating people altogether, but it hasn't really evolved the human population because look what we're now dealing with. We're dealing with people de-evolution. We're dealing with people who are scared of a virus that they can't, they can't get away from. And so either they tap into the wisdom of the ages of their genetic line and learn from their predecessors or they have to come back or they have to start over again and come back. Sugar. It's okay. It's probably a dog. Why? Sugar, it's okay. Shaggy. She. Sugar. Sugar. Shaggy. Come here. Hey. It's okay. It's probably a dog and her walker. Just chill. I know. I know. Don't worry. Okay, so so that's the thing is right now we are, and that's what I've been tossing around my head last night, thinking like, why is it that some people get this and why others don't? Oh, the reason why some people get this is because they have the wisdom of the ages. They learn from their mistakes. They learn from their predecessors. They don't want to end up like their grandfather, like their mother, like their father. They want to do something different. And those that, that say, okay, I'm okay with death and I'm okay with reproduction. I'm okay with all that. They're not ready to really get to the next level of evolution because they have to keep making the same mistakes until their soul gets tired. And who knows? And maybe they keep doing it and until, because at some point, here's the thing. This is what I, this is what I hope in the future is that. Well, here's the thing. This is what the Georgia Guidestone said, that the next, you know, the next world is going to be guiding reproduction carefully. So at some point, you know, with the Georgia Guidestones where they guide reproduction carefully and then with the chili juice where we don't want people dying or reproducing, only a certain amount of souls will be able to be born on this earth. And if we have 7 billion souls already right now, currently, and now we're cutting our world down to 500 million and this is according to the georgia guidestones assuming that it's really correct and it seems like it's really on point then what is the six billion five hundred million are going to do they're going to have to really fight for those physical human bodies that are being reproduced guided reproduce you know uh with the reproduction being guided carefully according to the georgia guidestones okay so Right now, it's like we have seven, whoever is dying right now and they're back and they're going back into the ground, they have right now seven billion chances to come back and start over again. Right now, every baby that's being, that, that is right now, that is in this gestational period, everyone that's pregnant, that baby is, is a chance for another person to come in and learn from their genetic line. Now you wonder, well, why are some genetic lines just like, like you wonder, like you look at a family, like I've seen a lot of different families on my Facebook and some are just like, dude, they got so many issues. It's like, oh my God, you know, and they, and they keep passing down the same issues from generation to generation. And you're like, and I don't want to say that they're stupid. No, nobody's stupid, but they don't seem to have a lot of sense. Like I've seen families that don't seem to have a lot of sense. And some may be very book smart, but not very smart street smarts. Some may be very street smart, but they're, they can only, you know, they, they have a lot of health issues and they've created kids with major, major health issues. And you're just like, and you, tr and I've tried to introduce certain things like, you know, you know, to, to some people out there and they, to they totally ignore me and you, and you wonder wh why are they ignoring me? Oh, you know, because they have to start, they have to, they're really they're not prepared to evolve in this next life. 
they may have to come back like in the future through another, you know, through another person's pregnancy and start over again in another family who can give them different knowledge, okay, to then where they then start getting it. So the ones that get where I'm coming from as far as my information, because when you think about it, it's no different than the grass growing with no balancing force to stop it from growing, okay? So that's what life is. Life is if there is nothing to stop it from going, it'll keep growing if you give it what it needs on a continuous basis and it's able to adapt and it's able to, with no major balancing force to stop it. No different than when you drop this, you know, the only thing that stops it is my hand, okay? So this is, I mean, you can call this gravity or you can call this, I mean, this is physics, but the only thing that stops this thing from, the only thing that stops this thing from, um, from going is another force, a bouncing force, which is my hand. No different than when cells reproduce, what stops it is it's not getting what it needs or there is a major other force that overwhelms and stops it from growing. Okay. So, and that's just, just, just like with life, you know, life can, can like, like with, with human souls, human souls can continuously be reproduced. Um, but, but if there isn't enough in the world to sustain or, or like what you're seeing the coronavirus, if there is a, a force out there that overwhelms the, the, the very fragile humanity that you're seeing right now, um, it's going to, it's going to kill off a lot of people and then also trigger reproduction again to start over again to say, okay, have you learned from the past? Have you learned from your genetic line not to make the same mistakes? And then, and you keep making the same mistakes, then you'll keep starting over again until you get it right. And so in my book right now that I've put out there, that's going to come out in June, 2020, I do talk about humanity loops. We are in a looping um, type of of a uh, world where it's all about death and reproduction intermixed with life somewhere overlapping the death and reproduction. And at some point we got to have either continuous life because we're already dealing with continuous death mixed in with an overlap of life, but death is the ultimate outcome. Okay. So, you know, when you have two things, life here and death here, and they both keep dropping, which side do you want to be on? The death side or the life side, and so that's what I'm saying. So, so, so my my mind is like going in this, in this direction because when you think about when I'm thinking about who understands my information, who doesn't, you, you realize that some people have not been um, recycled enough times on this earth to gather enough information to make the right choices to understand that maybe we don't have to die, that they have to keep dying because they haven't gathered enough information. And they had at least with America 300 years. You've had with humanity ever since humanity has been around 3.9 billion years as far as a single celled organism or 3.9 million years. So at some point, you're going to have to take the information that you have gathered over the thousands and thousands of years. And at some point, you're going to have to evolve at some point. At some point, you know, humans got to stop they've they, they got to get tired of dying and reproducing on a continuous basis. Stop making the same mistakes. Stop undermining your body's ability to regenerate by, by taking the shortcuts. Okay. I mean, it, it, everything's about balance. When you put too many herbs and powders in your body and you're not doing enough jelly juice, guess what's going to win out? The herbs and the powders that are going to cause more antibodies because of an imbalance. At some point, you're going to have to, to, to graduate from the holistic industry and just stick to the J juice. Okay? At some point, you're going to have to only give life to your body, not keep um, weighing it down by the, 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 the heavy metals and all of the very aggressive minerals that are overwhelming the life force in your body. At some point, you're going to have to learn this stuff. Some of you will get it. Some of you won't because holistics and all of the um, homeopathic, which is basically a diluted form of toxins, has been around for freaking centuries ever since China. Isn't it ironic that China had, was the first to deal with all of this destruction with the COVID-19? And then and they're the oldest, one of the oldest cultures out there. 
they invent they did all these inventions of like firecrackers and and acupuncture and all the different herbs and 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 roots and and fungus that they use as remedies but it but they have 1 billion people that are so weak that they succumb to this virus no different than america because we've taken cues from the ancient cultures and we haven't evolved from those ancient cultures because those ancient cultures kept dying and reproducing thus weakening the genetic line they may have wisdom but they don't have youth because they keep dying and reproducing and so you know and so i'm like you know when you when you take when everything when you understand the patterns of life and the patterns of death and you look at just patterns everywhere and then you look at where you are in all of these patterns okay and and you're all about the fear and you're all about the conspiracy and you're all about you know whatever it is that you're all about but you're not really regenerating yourselves at an exponential level and promoting that to the people around you you're essentially kind of falling into where eventually you might you'll get re recycled back and hopefully you come back and make the right choices but why not get it right in this lifetime so you can evolve to a potential indefinite life because humans have been given a greatest gift in the world and that is adaptation that's why humans have not been extinct really there's a lot of death and reproduction, that's for sure. But humans have not become extinct because we have that powerful ability that even, you know, well, animals actually do have that powerful ability to keep reproducing and they keep evolving um, and they they change and they adapt. And so, you know, my dog, I, I'm not sure exactly where she came from. I mean, I know she's an American pit bull, but, um, but I guess they came from like England or something. But every animal out there came from uh, something in the wild. So I guess, you know, if I guess I trace her genetic line back, maybe she, yeah, maybe she was a dingo. I, I don't know. I haven't looked that far as far as dogs and, but I know they do a lot of crossbreeding over centuries and centuries. Okay. So, you know, animals, like all of biodiversity has the ability to adapt to its surroundings. And, you know, we have this chance right now so we have so much massive death with this coronavirus and now we have the chance at life and so you're seeing now remember the two things life and death and they and, and they both drop which and if they didn't if there wasn't any balancing force to stop it then you it keep these things will keep going if there wasn't a floor to stop it if there was no floor and no earth underneath me and it was just space um and well, here's the thing. Just well, yeah, just space. Because when you're when, when you're when you're in space, and they and they show that they move an object and it keeps going until it's stopped by you know another object. That's like that's like inertia. Okay, so you can have inertia where you just don't do anything on a continuous basis until you do something, or you can do a whole bunch of stuff on a continuous basis with little intermittent times of sleep and keep going good morning mary b and so you know so that's the whole point of the jilly juice is, is getting off the death track where it's a continuous death and reproduction on a continuous looping cycle and then changing over to the life track where it just keeps continuous life and you keep feeling and healing and you don't have to be then coming back again to another life to start over again when you can actually get it right. So some of you that do get this, you have the wisdom of the ages. Okay, you have the wisdom of the ages and you're able to take the ancient knowledge from way back when, even though you don't consciously think about it, but, you, but you've listened to me long enough to know that, okay, it makes sense. Why are we looping in death and reproduction? Why? Why, why couldn't indefinite life be something to entertain? Maybe I need to change the way in which I deal with my symptoms. You know, it, go, it goes into such, you know, yeah, detail like that. But there's a bigger picture. Infinite fractals. Patterns in the universe. Patterns in your environment. Things that people don't even realize because they're too focused on one thing. They don't realize that everything is connected. Okay? Um... And so life can be infinite, even with one person. 
the reason why we're able to reproduce is because that's the that's the infinite life, but take away reproduction and you just keep living, hey, Pauline, then it's just a continuous life without that. But then what happens is, is that when you're constantly dying and reproducing, eventually when you keep reproducing, it weakens the genetic line because nobody has strength in the genetic line for them not to reproduce. And then they keep reproducing and making a clone of themselves. And that clone is, is, is less than, not saying it's less than, really less than, but it's not doing anything different than the parents did. No different than when you take the Jilly Juice um, old ferment, like a, like your 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 first original ferment, and you put that in the new jar with then you uh, add in your ingredients. The, 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 that old ferment is like a parent ferment, and then it produces new lactobacilli, and then it tastes exactly the same like the old ferment. Even though you have new ingredients, but the parents is the it's it's the it's the the starter. Okay, so the re so if somebody wants to change the taste of their ferment and they don't like the taste of their ferment, they wouldn't use the uh, a, a cup of the old ferment. They would just start over again and create a new a new uh, a new ferment with no starter. Okay, and so th that's how you can then you know evolve is where you make different choices you don't keep taking the wisdom of the parents well you can but you cannot but it depends on you know what kind of wisdom those parents have so maybe those parents don't have a lot of wisdom at all to offer their kid so the kid doesn't make any better choices than their parents and then their future is predictable so now so now i'm introducing that maybe parents make different choices for their child so their child actually has a chance at this life because it's very aggressive out there Okay, you as a parent have every responsibility to change the course of your kid's direction because you know, you know that where you're headed and you're trying to change that direction. And it's up to you to make sure that your kid gets that too. But obviously, you know, it's not always going to work out because some kids have their own minds. But if um, that kid has enough wisdom of the ages and they see what you're doing and they see what you're doing and they see the, 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 the specific measurable results. And they also get tired of how they've been manifesting. They're going to make the same changes as you because you have been that amazing influence. So, you know, I mean, it's just, if you just translate everything from nature into your life, into what you do every day, okay? And, and, and you understand that if there wasn't a building, if there wasn't cement, if there wasn't storms and weather, grass would just keep growing. If you look at the jungle, there is nothing to stop it except for man or animals who, if you have too much overabundance of animals, they will decimate a jungle. So there's always balancing forces. Well, life will continue to live. Okay, life will continue to live if it's given what it needs, okay? And absolutely, yes, break the cycle. But some people don't know what the cycle it, that they're on, okay? What does that mean, break the cycle? It's breaking the death cycle. It's not just break the cycle because people don't know what cycle it is. It's the cycle of death and reproduction. It's the cycle of certain kind of consumerism. It's the cycle of treating your, your, your symptoms with things on the market that overwhelm the body to cause then death and reproduction. Okay? It's it's understanding that yes, our world is run by money, but you don't have to be run by money. Okay? N money will naturally come when you start tapping into indefinite life and you have a very different way in which then you attack issues in our society to give solutions because we have enough problems in our society. We have enough problems in our society that actually people in the Jilly Juice world can create a solution for them if they get into a different mindset. But you will not know that different mindset if you are still messing with all the holistic industry and the detoxes because if you're not doing enough of Jilly Juice and you're doing more of the pills and powders and supplements and herbs, there's no, you're never going to decalcify your pineal gland to get access to a different thought process. So you may understand my stuff on a on a superficial level, 
but will you really get where I'm coming from in actual body, mind, and spirit? Not just the mind, because remember, the mind can be like, oh, I love this information, but it would not translate in the spirit or the body. Okay, and that's what I'm trying to do is get the body, mind, and spirit so aligned that you're not just intellectualizing my information, you're actually living it. You're living it and you're seeing the, 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 you're seeing now a whole different perspective that you, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I know that people have done the protocol and said, oh yeah, I've been doing it for two years and they're still in this cycling and in the same um, activism. They're still doing the same thing over and over and over again. Like, well, where, where's your, where's, where's the, the change? Where's the, the biochemical body, mind and spirit change? I only see you like, I love you. I always see that you say you love my information, but I don't see any behavioral changes. I don't see anything different. I see you say one thing, but you do another. I see you blowing smoke up my ass, but I see you there's nearly no substance behind what you're saying and doing. And so that's how I'm able to figure out who blows smoke up my ass because I haven't seen a change in people. They're still doing the same thing over and over again and they have all these excuses, all right? But they love my information. And some are very good salesmen. They can sell me on how they're doing it. But... Do I know them well enough that, that, that are they making, are they really making significant, I mean, is it really moving them in body, mind, and spirit, or is it, are they just still intellectualizing my information? And I get fooled, believe me, I, I mean, I, I get fooled, but over time, you're going to see, because oh, you can't help it, time is, time is one of the biggest indicators of, of, of what people say, you know? People say, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, whatever. And and you're like, okay, it's five years later and, and you're still in the same place. You're still have the same thought process. You're still in the same activism. You're still anti-government. You're still, you know, total conspiracy theorist. You still hate this and you hate that. And and you're still messing with the holistic industry and, and why, I don't know. Um, th that's what I'm saying is that eventually, eventually, we've got to take humanity in a total different direction. Taking the money out of the holistic industry, taking the money out of biotech, because that's basically what the holistic industry is. It's a wing of biotech to where we don't have to depend upon these huge industries anymore. That we can really just live off of cabbage, water, and salt, and then the food supply. But biotech, it does exist for food, so we can you know, make safe foods for people, processed foods to whole foods, to meat and, and milk and all of that. We need biotech for that, but we don't need biotech for their supplements. We don't need biotech for their cannabis. We don't need biotech for the vaccines because we're not going to have people that week that has to have a transition, a helper. But the reason why we need vaccines and we need biotech is because people still apply the wrong chemistry to their body. And so they need an intermediary. When you take herbs and supplements and powders, in whatever form, and now you can say, yeah, well, it's like processed. Like, no, because it's so much of a deluge on a body. When you're taking powdered herbs on a body that needs to have the jelly juice and regular food, you're overwhelming the system. When you're taking, like, like I've had, I can compare hamburger helper with the powdered herbs out there. Okay. They're both a condensed amount of heavy metals. Of elements that the body needs that the body needs but not in so much amount so when I um, so when I eat a hamburger helper I get a lot of mucus okay and I'm like okay well if I'm gonna eat a hamburger helper I better only eat now maybe uh, a third of my portion and not eat like the whole thing or even half and maybe if I'm gonna take a supplement for whatever reason it's in such a small amount that you might as well just go eat a food why spend so much money in something like like those powdered stuff with biotech when you can just eat the food supply? Okay, so that's what I'm saying is that we put our money where our mouth is. And then that's why the world exists the way it exists and why we have to have vaccines, why we have to have pharmaceuticals, why we have to have a lot of intermediaries because we still haven't learned from our past. So I'm trying to get all of you that are somehow either halfway into this or a little bit into this completely not dependent on the holistic industry, the allopathic industry, unless you absolutely have to in right now in the interim, where the whole goal is, 
that we now take humanity in a different direction. And that's going to take some time. I know that. But that's what I'm talking about, wisdom of the ages. Eventually, you got to stop looping. you got to stop looping in the same cycle of your predecessors. Okay? And so that's, you know, and, and that's hard to get across to people that are still stuck in that, in that mindset and don't see patterns. Don't see that, you know, the genetic lines are a pattern of death and reproduction and people not learning from their past mistakes. Um, and so when you have a person that lives continuously, just like when grass keeps growing continuously, it's been given what it needs and it can keep growing and it keeps evolving and adapting, but there isn't anything that's going to stop it from growing on a continuous basis. Now, um, a grass could evolve, not completely die off if there is interruptions in the universe, which we see happen. I mean, you know that with the volcanoes and the storms and then maybe a, um, a bunch of elements that can, um, that are condensed because of comets or like I said, yeah, like, you know, maybe there's something that happens like in the ground where all these methane gases come up. Okay. And that's going to evolve and change and mutate the vegetation, but it doesn't kill it. It just kind of changes it. And so if that continuously happens, let's say there is a fissure where these methane gases are coming up and there is vegetation around it. Well, that continuous fissure of methane gas coming up is going to then change the the DNA of that plant. So now that plant is, is still growing, but now it has a change in its DNA. And so it, it'll grow in a different way. And it'll keep doing that until either a fissure closes up or, you know, or there's another force out there that just stops everything or evolves it. So what happens if that fissure closes up and there's no more methane gas? Well, that plant will still keep growing and then the new change in the environment, you'll have another plant. And so if the methane type of grass doesn't get the methane anymore, well, then that will eventually die off. And then the new grass will come up because of the environment and then take over the methane dependent grass. So do you see what I'm saying is that, you know, um, we can live indefinitely and still be uh, alive and adapt to the surroundings. So when you have new viruses, you have just different changes in the atmosphere. You don't have to die altogether. You just evolve and you adapt and you upgrade. Okay. So that's the bigger picture that I'm looking for, for everybody that understands the jelly juice that's either next to me or is still trying to figure it out is that we are just another pattern in nature. We just happen to have a mouse that is like to a computer. Okay, we happen to have a pen that um, my dog doesn't use pens. But she is another pattern in nature that could keep, could, that could live infinitely if given what it needs with the right environment, fostered in the right direction. She's living by her hormones only. She depends upon me. I cater to her every need. But then in turn, she gives back and warns me of of mice running across or warns me of squirrels going to, you know, on the trees. She warns me of everything that's in the environment. But that's our quid pro quo. That's our business arrangement. And I love her. Okay. And so it's just, I want you to think in a very, start looking at the patterns, patterns in your relationships, patterns in everything, and start realizing that you are no different like your genetic line is no different than the genetic line of a plant that's in your community. And what would stop a plant from growing? And what would foster a plant to grow on a continuous basis? What would make a plant change? Okay, so when you see genetically modified or when you see cross breeding of like, of like fruits, it's not that the fruit is poisonous. They just happen to take, you know, this fruit and that fruit and make a sweeter grape or make a moon drop grape. So it's just kind of changing the form of life and, 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 you know, but, but, but grapes, you know, and, and fruit is something to eat, 
But then you think about the human, the human has to evolve, but they have, they should be living continuously. They shouldn't have to die and reproduce on a continuous basis. So you'll see in my book where I do um, compare humanity with the four seasons right now, the death and reproduction. You know, summer is life, fall is degradation, winter is like a death, summer is like life. And if we could have summer all year round in our body, what could we accomplish? But that would take someone who can tap into the wisdom of their genetic line, the wisdom of the ages. And you could be a person in a, in a family where they're all just derelicts and be the only one that really freaking gets it, which means that you got lucky to be able to tap into your, your genetic line while the others are like spinning off into their own little whatever. But you get it. And then you are then the, the last one in your genetic line that's not going to die or need to reproduce. And you will be the best copy of your whole pool of genes. That's exactly what I'm trying to, to get across to those that have not had the wisdom of the ages. And so that's, you know, so that's why I don't get too mad when I get nasty emails because they don't have enough time under their belt to really understand where I'm coming from. And you, you really, you can't try to convince someone that doesn't have enough wisdom of the ages to really get where I'm coming from. They haven't had enough time on this planet. They're young. A lot of people that, that come after me are people that, that listen to the shock jocks on YouTube and they're like in their 19, 20. Give them 20 years. They'll change their tune when they start seeing their body decay and degrade. And they're like, dude, this sucks. But, you know, some people need to go through that process and then get recycled back if they're lucky enough to come back and start over again and maybe do it right this time. So that's why you don't want to convince anybody out there because they may not really be a person that's going to get it. The ones that get my information, they, they hang back. They listen. They don't say anything. And then they weigh out the pros and cons. Sugar, come here. Come here. They weigh out the pros and cons, and then they make that they make that choice, make that decision. And and some of them do it as a family. I think that's amazing that Mary got her whole family figured because they they know that. What else do you have? This is so inexpensive that chili juice doesn't discriminate. It's not just for the rich. It's for the people that get it conceptually, but that's on you. Okay. But this is not just for the rich or for the for the smart. It's for people that have the wisdom of the ages. And money does not tell you that if you're smart or not. Having a lot of money does not translate into wisdom. It translates into hoarding, but it does not translate into wisdom. That's what I'm saying. If you are into the money game where you have to go get rich and you have to get rich off of me and you have to go get rich, then you don't have the wisdom of the ages. Okay? It's about balance. When you use something, do you replenish it? You can hoard it for a little bit, a hoard a little bit for any kind of like emergency thing, but you hoard so much of it, then it just sits there. And then when you die, now people are going to go and fight over your, your estate. And families break up because of people fighting over estates. My mother made a point to me that she's, that we're not inheriting anything that she has. Either my aunt will get it all or she'll donate it all to charity. But we're not inheriting anything. And I don't expect anything from my parents. I never did. I bought my own freaking car. Okay? But my mother has wisdom of the ages. It's just she doesn't have the wisdom of the Jejus because she's got to do it over again. She may come back in the next future if, you know, when and if she that happens, that day comes. I don't want it to come. I'm trying to tell her to stay at home. And she's staying home right now, but... She's not one to stay at home, okay? She's one of the, she's post-World War, she was born in 1942, okay? She's not one to really stay at home. So, you know, I, I know what I got to deal with in the future, but whatever, I, you know, it is what it is. But um, if you guys are lucky enough to understand this, you really do have the wisdom and, and this is just now, we're, we're, make, we're creating a new trajectory, okay? And I just, you know, and I'm, and, and, and it's it's interesting, but it's just something to think about. Okay? Unlimited souls can be created, but there's also balancing forces. And then eventually, uh, man's going to stop unlimited souls from being created because it's not serving us. When you have so many people who are committing crimes and domestic violence and 
are very predatory, um, man is going to be upset and say, okay, we got to stop this rampant reproduction. And now we have to guide reproduction carefully because we're not reproducing a very functional society. As you can see, a split in the conservative and the, and the Democrats. Too many people are disabled. Too many people are not contributing. Too many people are just parasiting off each other and their friends and their family, causing more, you know, chaos. So, be thankful that the COVID-19 is out there and you be the one to survive. No different than when Noah had to deal with the 40 days and 40 nights of, of, of flood. And it washed away most of the people that just didn't get the memo. Maybe they got the memo, but they ignored it. Okay? That's what I'm thinking is that God told everyone, go build an ark. Go do this. We're going to have rain. And then guess what? Nobody listened except for Noah and his family. That's what I'm thinking. Because there's always one person in every, you know, society that says, okay, hey, uh, something's coming up here. What's going on? People are like, ah, oh, laughing at them, laughing at them, laughing at them, until it now finally comes down to it. And now the rains are falling. Now the virus is falling. And now everyone's left going like, what the hell? What the WTF, WTF, WTF? And they're all freaking out. So history repeats itself. The Bible is just, you know, another uh, story of life and death and it probably did happen in some ways and we just keep repeating until we get on a different trajectory so anyways there's my talk for today you guys have an amazing day um, just think about it and start looking at the patterns in your life in your society in the world around you because once you realize that we've been doing this for a very long time now we've got to do something different. We got to. We can't afford not to. Okay, bye.